Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Jeff Silver joins us. He's of counsel with Dickinson Wright. He's also just inducted in the Gaming Hall of Fame. He has great stories coming up on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome back to the program uh, Jeff Silver. He's off counsel with Dickinson Wright, uh, and he is a legend in the gaming business. Uh, he just got into the Gaming Hall of Fame, and the headline said, Jeffrey Silver cleaned up the industry. Welcome back to the program, sir. Oh, thank you, Sam. I really appreciate being invited on. To well, it's, it's always fun. I'm sorry it's been so long since we had you on. Um, but when I saw the Gaming Hall of Fame, I thought, man, we've got to get you back in. Um, so let's start out with, did you see the movie The Irishman? I did. What'd you think? Uh, dramatization, but in, in, in actuality, no one is ever going to know the answer. Uh, there are so many people who have taken the story to their grave. So uh, editorializing it uh, through Hollywood is not... Uh, going to give you any kind of uh, d definite answer. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll tell you, you know, if somebody tells me they paint houses, I'm a little concerned these days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let, let's go back in time. Um, you were, what, 29 years old when you were appointed to the Nevada Gaming Control Board, three-member board back in, what, 75? About back in 75, yeah, I was 29. I don't look so, a day older today. No, you don't, sir. Um, what, what made you want to join the Gaming Control Board under Michael O'Callaghan? I, was, uh, I wasn't really looking to join it. It was a, a situation where I was being um, interviewed for a, a job as a civil litigator by a major law firm in town. And after they finished putting the pitch on me at the Las Vegas Country Club for lunch, they started talking about the Gaming Control Board and who was going to uh, replace uh, Shannon Bybee, who was the board member. And... Uh, they talked about you know the things that were going on in, in gaming and so on and it sounded pretty interesting to me so after the luncheon i went back and talked to my friend who was a district judge and asked him how to get appointed if you weren't if you were interested in this and he said just send a letter to the governor so i did and i put a resume in there and about a week later i got a call from michael callahan i'd never spoken with him before i never met him 
And uh, he said, I'd like to have you checked out and I'll get back with you. And hang, hung up the phone. I said, fine. So two weeks later, he called me up and he said, uh, okay, everything checked out fine. But uh, before I appoint you, you have to come in, to Carson City and meet me because I'd never met him. So I said, well, I'm in trial this week at the DA's office and uh, I'll come up on Saturday if that's okay. And he said, sure. And that's how it was. I, I, I came up, I was picked up at the airport by one of the other board members who I thought was just his driver and uh, met with him in the mansion. And uh, he said, okay, good, I met you. And by the time you get back to Las Vegas, uh, the, the news media will have uh, the name of your appointment. And that was it. All right, so the background you've put up has the Riviera and the Stardust there, properties that you were involved with. Um, you must have known going in that the mob had great influence in what was going on in Nevada at the time. Um, did you have qualms about that? I did have some, and, and especially with the governor's comment to me uh, that, uh, you know, one of the purposes of my being appointed was that I had a prosecutorial background and he wanted to make sure that uh, I did everything that was necessary to clean up the industry and make it, uh, uh, you know, free from organized crime influence. But I, I really didn't know how entrenched things were. I grew up here in Las Vegas and uh, periodically I'd have uh, classmates whose parents were arrested by the FBI for this and that and the other thing. And I knew there were a lot of wiretaps going on. But uh, a week before I actually uh, took uh, the position, Sam Giancana was murdered in Chicago. And uh, I started paying more attention to the fact that these guys played for keeps and it may not be as, uh, as uh, simple as, as any, anybody uh, had uh, portrayed it. All right, so I mean, that's a huge portfolio, clean up the gaming industry when it was completely infested with mob. Um, what, what was your first encounter? What was the first place you wanted to, uh, to start to clean things up? Well, I didn't have a blueprint or anything like that because uh, I was sitting in my office and had a clean desk as people do when they start a job and saying, gee, this is pretty easy, uh, not much uh, challenge here. And then uh, somebody mentioned about the, the fact that there was a, a lot of uh, information, uh, you know, rumors and so on about this Frank Rosenthal application that was coming up. And that was the first time I'd heard that guy's name and realized that uh, this was perhaps an important uh, licensing uh, hearing that was coming up in the next couple of months. And that issue, you know, really came into focus when I, about a week later, got a visit from a guy from Florida who was a private investigator. And uh, he said, uh, you know, can, I, can you help me with this information? And I tried to do that. And he says, if there, is there anything else going on here that maybe I can help you with? And I said, well, the only thing I've heard through the grapevine is this guy named Frank Rosenthal is coming up for an application for a key employee. And uh, he said, oh, you mean lefty? And I hadn't heard that. And uh, he said, uh, yeah, he says, uh, when I was in the bureau, I used to chase him around South Florida. He was a bookmaker. And he says, by the way, did you ever get any information about him in your reports about his attempting to bribe college athletes? And uh, he was uh, testifying in front of the McClellan Senate hearing on uh, college athletics and organized crime infil infiltration. And I said, no, I hadn't heard a word of that. He says, well, I was counsel to that committee and I have the transcripts of those hearings in my garage. He says, I'll send them to you. So two weeks later, you know, we didn't have Federal Express at that time. I get this UPS parcel and there were these bound transcripts. And in the transcripts, there was Frank Rosenthal taking the Fifth Amendment to all of these questions about bribing college athletes and his activities in, in organized crime. Now, Frank Rosenthal, mind you, in case your listeners don't know, is the principal character in the movie Casino. And uh, he was the editorial director to the movie, so it's all written from his perspective. But um, I, I called the, uh, the chief of investigations and uh, I said, do you have any of this stuff in there? And he says, no, we were just going to confine this to a local investigation. I said, well, this is, this is pretty severe. And so I, I, he says, well, you're going to have to talk to the chairman. And I did. I uh, mentioned that to him. And he says, well, we're going to have to go with it. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, dramatic. So uh, when the, the time for questioning came, it, this was in Carson City in, uh, in January or February of 1976, uh, you know, the chairman turned to me, he says, 
Mr. Silver, do you have any questions? And I proceeded to examine uh, Rosenthal on those transcripts for like the next uh, seven, eight hours one day and another three or four hours the next. And it was uh, it was pretty tense to be very frank with you. And it was uh, for a guy who was 29 years old, it was definitely tense to be facing down, you know, the likes of Oscar Goodman and Harry Claiborne, uh, his his counsel. Um, I, I can't even imagine how crazy that was. And and in the end, Lefty Rosenthal um, turned out to be an FBI informant, correct? Well, he said he was, and that's one of the reasons why they were going to confine it to a local investigation. That's what. Uh, a, a reporter, uh, Jane Ann Morrison, had said. So uh, I never really had that confirmed one way or the other, but um, it would be doubtful that as deeply enmeshed as he was in the entire process that he would actually share anything important about uh, what was going on at the Stardust and by and about his, uh, his criminal directors. Um, was there um, a, an, an obvious connection between Lefty Rosenthal and Maya Lansky? Because Maya Lansky was based in Florida as well. The uh, no, I, I think at the time that, that Rosenthal was in Florida, he was just a uh, a small time bookmaker. It, it wasn't really that he was his designated. He rose to prominence as a result of the fact of his bookmaking acumen. And when the federal government reduced the federal excise tax uh, to a point where a book inside of a casino could make money, uh, he was tabbed by the people in Chicago to uh, to. Uh, opened the, this big book at the Stardust Hotel, which turned out to be the model for all of the, the race books in brick, bricks and mortar casinos. It was, it was really quite uh, avant-garde at the time, and it turned out to be very successful. But he was the guy that had the ability uh, to run a book like that. And then he graduated into other uh, positions of responsibility as, as the trust level was, uh, uh, was given uh, by his, uh, his handlers in, in Chicago. Uh, but you guys stopped him from getting the license. Um, but then he ended up being the entertainment director and had, this is stunning, had his own TV show on KLAS Channel 8. Um, and on, on Saturday nights, uh, he would perform, share with people what that was all about. And did you watch that show? And were you astonished? Uh, I was astonished. I watched it. Uh, you know, a number of times he would take a take a few shots at me after the first licensing hearing, uh, you know, calling me a, a panhandler, panhandler snake or something like that. It was he was very, very upset. He had a tremendous ego. And for him to have been denied from this job that paid a lot of money and uh, was prestigious and gave him a lot of authority over other people's lives. Uh, he was very upset about it. He didn't immediately get into the entertainment uh, director role. He, uh, after he was denied as the uh, uh, casino director of the Stardust, he moved to the food and beverage director position, which was a position that was not covered by the gaming regulations at that time. And they actually had to change the regulations in order to capture him in that instance. But there was uh, allegations going on of false invoicing and things of that nature, where people actually came and visited with me to give me information, one of whom uh, wasn't seen since. I mean, they found his car at McCarran Airport uh, abandoned and no one's ever seen this guy alive. So uh, they were obviously planning for keeps there. And then when he was denied as the uh, uh, food and beverage director, then he came back as entertainment director because there was a, uh, a law that put, was put in place for Frank Sinatra who was uh, accused of, uh, of hosting uh, Sam Giancano when he was an owner of the club uh, Cal Neva. And uh, they were afraid that he wouldn't be able to perform or they wouldn't be able to enter into contracts with him at Caesars Palace. So he put an exception in the law for entertainment directors. And that's how Rosenthal got in there for a period of time until uh, the, the other influence was captured. And, and the reason why he was, he, he was nabbed the third time uh, which is the scene that you see, the third go around was the scene you see in the movie Casino with, with uh, Senator Reed as, as the chairman. Uh, the reason he was nabbed is because there was a dispute at the Stardust uh, Race and Sports Book, and Rosenthal came down and, uh, and answered the, the questions of the agents regarding why they shouldn't make the payout. And that, was, uh, that, that kind of nailed him in terms of uh, saying that he wasn't involved in the other aspects of the operation. Later on, I, I took a tour of his house in the last couple of years, 
and they had all kinds of electronic equipment in there that he was actually running the casino from his home, hardwired at that time because they didn't have the internet, uh, hardwired with a lot of electronics that he could see through cameras as to what was going on. Uh, amazing. Now, uh, uh, during this time, your life was threatened too. Yes, uh, it was a, not, not in a, a direct way, it was an indirect way. Um, although there were certainly implications that maybe, uh, you know, that I should uh, change my attitudes about uh, being, you know, strictly enforcing the laws. Uh, but there was a, a time that the FBI agents asked me to come down to the Bureau's offices and they were concerned about a transcript that they, that they had gotten from someone in Kansas City. And they showed me this transcript. It was like eight or nine pages. And in the transcript, they kept referring to this guy named Silverman, who was in the, on the gaming board, and that they were talking about, you know, they were, they were going to think about uh, taking me out. And uh, at the last page, they said, no, that would create too much heat. And I breathed a sigh of relief, and the agents that were standing over me as I was reading this thing started laughing because they knew that at the end they had abandoned their plans to, to kill me. Wow. Okay, let's take a break so our audience can catch their breath. We'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers after this timeout. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. Well, I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, Season 2, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ah! Hey, Dad? Are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Jeffrey Silver. He is off counsel with Dickinson Wright, just uh, admitted into the Gaming Hall of Fame, and rightly so. Um, I, I, you know, um, you were prominently featured. Let me, let me make one comment about that, Sam, and that is. Sure. Um, a belated congratulations to you for having been uh, inducted into the Nevada Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Uh, it's always great to, to be recognized by your peers of professionals for your accomplishments, and the same would go to you. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, so um, you were prominently featured in the podcast Mobbed Up that the Las Vegas Review Journal put out, um, season two especially. and um, one of the episodes that struck me the most was the episode on former federal judge Harry Claiborne, and you referred to him as co-counsel with Oscar Goodman. Um, did Harry Claiborne in the end get a fair shake with all that he went through? I really can't say. I mean, uh, <clears throat> that was really outside of my sphere of, of influence. There was a, always some questions about his friendship with, with Benny Binion and the, the folks at the Horseshoe. But I have to say that aside from being one of the, the, the most astute criminal defense lawyers, Harry always took on cases that involved uh, accusations against the police and he handled them for free, pro bono. Um, he, uh, as far as I know, he was a, a very good judge. And, you know, he grew up in the, in the Las Vegas attitudes. And perhaps if he leaned a little bit too closely to one side or the other, uh, that might have been open open season for him because at that point the strike force and the attorney U.S. Attorney General's office was uh, very adamant about uh, shutting down organized crimes influence in Nevada, and he was just the 
you know, a, a uh, lightning rod for all of the other activities that were going on. Um, when, when I talk to the Washoe County DA these days, um, and, and this has been going on for the last 20 years, he says the cooperation, and, and the previous DA says the same thing, um, that the cooperation between law enforcement is incredible in the state of Nevada. Was it that way back in the 70s? Yes and no. I mean, uh, there was a, obviously there was a scandal about the fact that there were a number of, of officers in the in the Metropolitan Police Department that were uh, a part of uh, Tony Spilatro's hole in the wall gang, uh, and so there was some people that were involved in the te intelligence side that were uh, said to have been compromised. But overall, when I was on the Gaming Control Board, they they knew I had a background in prosecution, and they. They trusted me. I, one of the first acts that I did when I was on the gaming control board was I went in into the Dunes Hotel uh, because they were interested in finding some information out about uh, some individuals who had had lock boxes in the hotel's casino cage, and they needed uh, information as to what the lock box numbers were in order to get a search warrant. And I said, I can help you. I've got a badge, and I can go into the casino's um, casino cage and get that information. So I did, I went, went in there and I went through the index cards and I said, okay, here's the name of the individual. Here's their locks box number. I gave it to the bureau. They came in with a search warrant and found a lot of money in there that was uh, supposedly laundered or East Coast money that was the layoff money for, for wagering. And so from that point forward, they, were, they knew that they could trust me. And I had a very good relationship with them through the, the three and a half years that I was on the gaming control board. So uh, there was never any issue that they trusted, didn't trust me. However, they have had other situations where the, the person that followed me and others that were involved in gaming regulation uh, did not have the same amount of trust. All right, let's take another break. Back with Jeff Silver after this timeout. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said he's left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, uh, Jeff Silver is off council with Dickinson Wright, uh, is in the Gaming Hall of Fame, just inducted. Um, what's, I've, I've asked this question of Senator Reid, Governor List, and others. Um, there have been accusations in various books that the mob was responsible for the Kennedy, Kennedy assassinations because the, they, they say that the mob helped the Kennedy or uh, John Kennedy become president and, um, and then the Kennedys went after the mob. Do you believe that there's any truth to that or is that just you know, a story? Everyone is looking for the definitive answer on that question. But I said, I would say that there, there was certainly enough information and, and uh, peculiarities about the case and the fact that Carlos Marcello was the organized crime chief in Louisiana and that he had ties with Jack Ruby. And, and uh, there were all kinds of uh, allegations there that uh, it, would, it would make sense that if you were gonna put a chain of information together, you could certainly make that case. Um, one last question here, Ned Day. 
um, one of the toughest reporters, you must have known him quite well uh, back in the day, um, died um, in Hawaii, uh, was uh, drowned. Uh, do you believe that that was natural causes or do you believe that that was uh, not fair play? Uh, let me just say I, I, I loved and, and appreciated Ned Day for his courage. And every time I do a presentation about the Rosenthal years, I always end with the picture of Ned Day with his burned out car and, and uh, the, the things that he did. I gave him money uh, to go find uh, Jay Vandermark, the guy who had, uh, engineered the, the big Stardust slots game that uh, stole seven million plus dollars from the casinos. I don't think that, that he, was, he was murdered because that, that's not the way that, that the mob kills people. They don't kill them in, in a resort in the ocean somewhere. Uh, I just think that he's, he was a hard living, hard drinking kind of guy and, and a hard smoking kind of guy. And it, it, the chances of his having a heart attack from exertion, from being out in the ocean, I think is more than, more than likely. Jeff Silver, I could go on for days with you. So um, can we make a date in a couple of months for you to come back and, and we'll talk more about all this? Because I want to get to your marketing career, which in itself is unbelievable. Thank you so much for doing this. And again, congratulations on your induct induction. Well deserved in the Gaming Hall of Fame. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you, Sam. And we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions. And all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority and it's ours too. Every day in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. You can do that now these days. We'll see you on the next broadcast.